The WWE Draft of 2023 is internally being viewed by talent as a complete failure. We talk all about it in today's Amped Up Podcast for 7-2023. Plus, we might be seeing a return to WWE and this individual could help revitalize a veteran's career. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. This individual just parted ways with AEW. Also, NXT's rating sees a big increase with the influx of WWE's main roster talent. We'll talk about what it all means for NXT's future. And we discuss who, 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 who <laughs> should be taking that title off of Roman Reigns. No, it's not Kofi, Xavier, or even my boy Big E. But we will talk about who should be taking that title off of Roman Reigns. I asked that big question in yesterday's Amped Up podcast, and you guys did not fail to deliver your responses, man. We're going to go over what the Amplified Unit, who the Amplified Unit believes should be taking the title off of Roman. And I got to tell you, I don't know if the picture is any more clearer now than before I asked the question. And this is why that WrestleMania decision looms so large. We'll talk about that. A bunch of super thankses from yesterday's podcast showing the love to the channel. We'll go over all of those as well. We got JR9's NXT report. How JR9, my right-hand man on the channel, felt about this week's NXT show. It's all coming up. It's all fully amplified. Audio format only, so pop in the earbuds and let's get amplified. All right, all right, all right. Hopefully you guys got your coffees and you're ready to rock. We'll start from the top. WWE's draft of 2023 internally being viewed by the talent as a complete failure. Well, you don't need Captain Obvious to come to that conclusion. Management will tell you it was a complete failure. The talent is now telling you it is a complete failure. The fans will tell you it was a complete failure. Anybody with any semblance of common sense and logic will tell you that the draft of 2023 for World Wrestling Entertainment was a complete botch. To this day, we don't truly know what it was done for. You'd like to think, oh, it was just to pop a couple of ratings. Then you believe that maybe the company truly felt that if they quote-unquote shook things up, the product would get better. But no, it's the same bloodline story that is putting the company on its back. That's really the only story that people are talking about still to this day. So the draft coming out of it, not just the, the, the odd decisions, like putting Cody Rhodes on Raw, keeping Roman over on SmackDown, after you said there was more story to tell, obviously that's in the way, way yonder of the future, right? Maybe are, are you going to bring Cody around at WrestleMania 40? <laughs> We're going to do Roman to try to recreate the moment that we just had in April and you're not going to come close, bro. <laughs> we'll still be supporting Cody. By that point, everybody will be begging and pleading for the title to come off of Roman. <laughs> But that type of magic and lightning in a bottle, that's lost at Mania. So you can say there's story to tell still between Cody and Roman, but you'll never get that moment back. But we'll wait another whole year. <laughs> Cody will go, will do weird things like uh, a supposed story with Brock Lesnar for three months all through the summer. And we never even got a reason for the story. We'll just see Brock show up every three weeks, beat up Cody Rhodes lead to a match, and just rinse and repeat. And we'll see Cody Rhodes involved in a lot of more weird shit going into next year, I guess. But, okay, so you split up what you said there was more story to tell. Obviously, you don't have more story. You're just going to start a whole nother book in the future. 
So then what they did, then what they did, they said, okay, all right, now we have this, okay, Roman's going on vacation with the championship, we got this brand split, all right, we're going to make a new championship, that's what we're going to do, we're going to just create, like, like you can print money, we're going to print championships, (laughs) so they made a whole new title, they said at first, whatever brand that Roman's on, He's going to stay there with that title. This is going to be for the other brand, which in this case would be Monday Night Raw. And then the complete following week, maybe it was two days after on their WWE.com, one of those type deals, they said, well, JK, just kidding. We are going to invite SmackDown to participate. Well, wait, that doesn't make sense. So now you're going to have two world championships on one brand or then... Corey Graves a week later finally said, well, they're going to go to Raw if they're from SmackDown. Okay, then why why would they be drafted before? Why not do the title thing first, then the draft? You see what I mean? Everything was ass backwards. Nothing's making sense. Imagine if you just got drafted over to SmackDown, you win the championship a week later, and then you got to go back to Raw. That's like a major league baseball player saying you're being traded from the Yankees to the... Los Angeles Angels. And then four days later, they say, just kidding, pack up your family, you're moving back to New York. Four days later, you don't do that to somebody. If it's a trade, it's a trade. So right from the jump, the waters were muddied. And you have this title created out of thin air. Now, to Sethington's credit, he did say, yes, we we just created this championship, so it's going to take a while for it to become prestigious and he and AJ Styles which were the two participants going for that title after that little mini tournament they both admitted they can't argue with the fans they can't disagree with the fans that call it a secondary championship that call it a participation trophy or a runners-up title a secondary title they can't even disagree because it is they literally created the title it's on them to make it prestigious It just sucks that they have to be in a position to do such. But AJ Styles said while he was going for the title, before he even had the match with Sethington Rollins, he said, I can't even argue with the fans. (laughs) Roman's got those titles on lockdown, so we had to create a title. (laughs) Because ain't nobody getting his. You know, it it just made fans to this day not look at that title as anything prestigious. It was literally created because they refused to take the titles off of Roman. So you put the draft mixed in with this weird title popping up out of nowhere. Right from the jump, the waters are muddied for this draft. Then you start looking at the decisions that are being made. You have Alba Fire and Isla Dawn getting drafted over to WWE's main roster. Caden and Chance, they both get drafted. So the NXT champions, now you're saying you're going to unify the titles. Okay, I hope you're going to make everybody look good in the process. Instead, once the NXT tag team titles went away, so did Carter and so did Chance. They had a really good first outing with Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, I believe it was. And then after that, afterthoughts. I don't even believe they were on Monday Night Raw, Chance and Carter. So the momentum, absolutely gone. On top of that, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. I know they were not on TV this week. I don't know if they were on TV last week. These were champions in a unified tag title match. The titles were gone, and so were these, all of these individuals, all these ladies. There is no plan for them right now. Chance, Carter, Fire, Dawn, nothing. Man, I wish I could tell you it stops there. It it doesn't. Look at J.D. McDonut. You guys remember when J.D. was drafted over to the main roster and he started attacking Dolph Ziggler? Dolph Ziggler was getting attacked out of nowhere. And when asked why, this is kind of odd, he said, well, because if I'm going to show up, I'm going to make a statement. What's the statement? You're attacking Jobber Dolph. That's sad to say. Dolph Ziggler still to this day 
whether you think he's still in his prime or not, Dolph Ziggler is still one of the best professional wrestlers today. It's a, it's, it's a shame that the company doesn't put more stock in him, and it's a shame that he's okay collecting that paycheck. And what I mean by that, of course, is Dolph Ziggler has so many other things besides pro wrestling going on career-wise that he probably has his whole career mapped out already. His whole career trajectory is probably already mapped out. And I can't even tell you that WWE or pro wrestling is a big part of that in the future. I can't even tell you that that's the case. Um, He's a smart dude, and he knows that he's very fortunate to have been in that company for as long as he has and collecting the type of paychecks that he is. So I don't think he presses WWE too much on bad booking. In fact, I know he does not. And in return, WWE feels like, all right, well, as long as he's happy, or at least good, we don't have to give him anything else. We can concentrate over there, or he's washed up, he's used. No, he's not. Dolph Ziggler is amazing. Dolph Ziggler, on any, he could be off TV for four straight months, come back, cut a two-minute promo, and he can captivate you. It's sad that his best promos are always backstage or on WWE.com. And not for the world to see. They just don't give him the time of day like that. Anyway, look at J.D. McDonough. Because Dolph Ziggler is booked like such a jobber, and that's only when he is used. Dolph Ziggler, you may see him once every couple of months. So J.D. McDonough comes up and he starts attacking Dolph Ziggler and he says, because I want to make a statement and go for the very best, the top. It's Dolph Ziggler, bro. Well, that made no impact whatsoever, but even worse, after just two weeks of attacking Dolph, J.D. McDonough was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he's on main event, maybe he's on a dark match at a house show somewhere in the middle of the country, who knows? But J.D. McDonough is not on television, he is not known to the casual fan, the lapsed fan, or anybody Anybody watching any of these shows, nobody is talking about J.D. McDonough. He was this big call-up. You go to Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes gets called up, defeats Baron Corbin in about 10 seconds-ish. You think, all right, this dude's going to the moon. Instead, he's going to catering. He was not seen for weeks afterwards. He was just finally, they finally took him off the mill carton. He was on SmackDown for a brief second this past week, talking about how he's going to win this fatal four-way on Friday night and have a chance to go for Austin Theory's U.S. Championship. Now, a lot of us love Cameron Grimes. BC definitely does. But there's no way he can win over L.A. Knight. Yeah, there's not a chance. Knowing WWE, they won't have Cameron win or LA Knight. (laughs) It's a bunch of faces as it is. I think Rey Mysterio is in this match. Sheamus is in this match. Cameron is obviously a face, defeating Baron when he was on TV many moons ago. And LA Knight, whether you like to call him a heel or not, is going to be the most over guy in that match on that night. But Cameron Grimes, all right, you, well, you, okay, you, you waited on this guy. This guy, even before the draft, had already been called up. A lot of people don't know that. He waited for over two months, guys, over two months he waited. And they said, okay, when the draft happens, that's when we're going to finally move you up and showcase you on TV. Well, they did, and then they took him right off. Apollo Crews says, hey, go back to NXT for a little bit. Once we do the draft, we'll shake it up a little bit. We'll, we'll bring you back and uh, we'll make you very relevant once again on the main roster. Apollo Crews has not been relevant. Apollo Crews hasn't even been seen. I don't believe. I don't even know if he's a free agent. That was another debacle, right? I can keep going with names, guys. This will be a two-hour podcast. All the names that were supposedly drafted and you haven't even seen them <laughs> since the draft began. Months ago, we could go two hours. There's so many more names, but the Apollo thing just made me think about, remember there was a, a free agent. They couldn't even, 
they couldn't even come to a decision on everybody on the roster. That should tell you how many people are on the roster, by the way. Maybe too many. You know, a ship is made to sail pristinely. But if every ship has a capacity limit, right? A weight limit. Let's hold off. You ain't going to want to wind up like the Titanic. Make sure that thing gets to land and doesn't sink. Way too many talents. When you do a draft and you can't even come to a conclusion on where everybody should go and you call a bunch of them in a free agent pool, that's not good. Baron Corbin, a free agent. The guy has to go back to NXT. He's still labeled as a free agent. We believe he's going to stay in NXT, by the way. But a free agent, Baron Corbin. There was a free agent, Ali, and he just ends up going to NXT because it's clear Raw and SmackDown didn't want him. That's what you're basically saying, right? (laughs) Free agent. (laughs) Nobody wants him. And then they go back to what Paul Levesque McMahon called a uh, the college football system to what the NFL is the developmental to the NFL the college to the NFL they went back to college <laughs> could you imagine michael jordan going from uh, the chicago bulls after winning six championships and going back to north carolina cuz he says i just feel i'm going to be challenged more here than i am in the nba i'm sorry what Ali's a free agent, Baron, they all going over there. Von Wagner was a free agent. I don't even think he lay, he stayed in NXT, but he was labeled as a free agent. He just stayed there. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, that's basically saying that these people don't want you, right? So that was another massive um, plot hole in this whole in this whole draft of 2023, I, I, literally, you can go two hours on this, guys, uh, of all the botches on it. Um, any which way you look at it, it was just a massive botch. You look at like just respecting the draft, right? Respecting the brands. The whole part of the draft is the brand split and respecting it. And immediately you were seeing talents cross over. You were seeing weird things like Matthew Riddle was on a different brand and then he just showed up on, I think he was like showed up on SmackDown and Raw. He was just on every brand. He didn't have a title. He just came back and started showing up on every brand. But he was drafted to Raw, I believe. And then he just started showing up to, but but I think he was smacked. I I don't even know. I, I, I couldn't even tell you. He was with Randy Orton. Then he, Orton got injured it doesn't matter. He was on every brand. So you don't know. That's what I, if you have the casual fan and they know about the brand split or a, or, or a draft and you're seeing riddle on every show, you got Paul Heyman showing up. Smackdown is where he was drafted as number one with Roman. They came as a package to deal. They even announced his name, showed the dra- the, the graphic of Paul Heyman. And then he's right there. Like the next Monday, Or very soon after, he's right there on Monday Night Raw because they didn't think it through and they had to sell these weird interbranded feuds. So he's there on his phone. It says visitors pass. (laughs) He stuck it behind his phone. So he, Paul Heyman's there with a visitors pass. Shotzi, Shotzi is drafted to SmackDown or stayed on SmackDown, whichever you see it as. And she comes running out on Monday Night Raw in full gear to help out Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel Rodriguez to go for tag titles in the future. So she's not a champion. She's in full gear backstage on Raw. Adam Pierce, no WWE official cares to say, well, wait a second. (laughs) What are you doing? You're on SmackDown. I mean, could you imagine if Otani for the Angels, the best player in baseball right now, showed up in a Yankee uniform for the New York Yankees and he's going to play when Judge does come back from injury, his toe injury, with the second best player in baseball, Aaron Judge. Otani just leaves the Angels one game. He's supposed to be playing with the Angels, but instead he shows up in New York and he shows up to fucking to play with the Yankees, to play alongside Aaron Judge. Could you imagine... Would, wouldn't somebody go, wait, this isn't, that's not fair. That's not right. He cannot play tonight. If they're playing the Baltimore Orioles, wouldn't the Orioles say, no, Otani is not a Yankee. This is not right. Wouldn't somebody in the locker room say, wait, 
You're Otani. What are you doing in our locker room with our uniform? Fuck it. Come on out with us. Let's play. Baseball's really going to let that happen. LeBron James just can't show up with the New York Knicks. I would love that. Right? He just leaves LA for a game. He shows up, plays with the New York Knicks. Love it. Aaron Rodgers, a couple of games this year, he's going to come back to the Packers and play with the Green Bay Packers. Sorry, Jets. Just for two games, though. Shotzi, full gear. Running out to a Monday Night Raw game. Now, now, if you say minor details, BC, we can look past that, man. That's the problem. The fact that we are seeing all these issues, though, we shouldn't have to just look past it. WWE should have to think about it. If you're going to make these monumental decisions, honor it. You know, when they honor it, guys, we can honor it. That's all we ask for. Make these things prestigious. If you're doing a king of the ring, make it prestigious. If you're doing money in the bank, make it prestigious. If you're doing a brand split, make it prestigious. Right? Money in the bank. Can it be any more of a joke? Boom box Brock. Remember him carrying the money in the bank briefly like it's a boom box. What about James Ellsworth winning the women's money in the bank match? Not Carmel. It was James Ellsworth who actually did it. The work. Yeah, but you got Otis winning it, but he doesn't even get the cash in. He has to go back to NXT and Miz somehow gets the contract. Austin Theory gets a contract and he doesn't even cash in on the world champion. He goes for the mid-card title during a Monday Night Raw and during an open challenge. He didn't even have to cash in. The fact that he did is obnoxious. And then he goes for the mid-card title. And then he doesn't even win the mid-card title. <laughs> and then his excuse is, I was never going to beat Roman anyway. And then again, I always say this. A few months later, he said, I want to be in the Rumble so I can beat 29 other guys so I can have a chance to take on Roman Reigns. You just said you didn't. You just had the briefcase to do that. You didn't have to take on 29 other dudes. This is what I mean. Just help us out. Any good show that you love... You probably love it because the story makes sense, or at least the majority of the time. I doubt your favorite show is so horrible storyline-wise that you continue to watch for years. You love the characters, and you probably like where the story is going. It's like Walking Dead. For seven or eight years, people loved it. After about seven or eight, you started to see the story dwindle off. They started to lose touch with the foundation that it was built upon. So then even Walking Dead fans were like, whoa, hold up. And you saw the rating when Walking Dead finale was put on to the rating it was getting in season four, five, and and such. You saw the massive drop off. That's what happens if you're just not making sense. So fans shouldn't have to look past it. The company should have to think about it before you even make the decisions. Not sure what they're doing with so many of these talents. Who got screwed up in the pri- during all of this more than anything was the NXT talents. Again, whether it's a JD McDonut, a Cameron, Cameron Grimes, an Alba Fire, or an Isla Dawn, and so many others. I, I don't know what that says about like the Wagners was a free agent and Raw didn't want him. SmackDown didn't want him. He's got to stay in NXT and he's telling now his personal stories and trying to get that sentimental pop and it's good but i can't help but think damn nobody wanted wagner that's what you're basically saying man nobody wanted baron corbin he had to go back to nxt nobody wanted ali he's got to go back to nxt and look at ali they said hey we're gonna give you a uh we're gonna give you a north american championship now people were already upset with that right why is wesley losing to a main roster guy but they didn't even go that route. They switched it up. And this week, they gave it to Dominic Mysterious. D- Dom- Dominic, I can fucking Mysterious. Dominic Mysterio. Dum Dum. They gave it to him. Pop the rating. We'll go over that in a few minutes. So what does that do for Ali now? Ali is now in this feud with Wesley with no title on the line. Or you do Ali Lee and Mysterio, triple threat, I get, but but now you're doing Ali Mysterio. That just doesn't make sense. It's coming out of nowhere for the bash. 
So even if you're a free, even if they stuff you in NXT as a free agent and say, just play here, man, we'll give you this title, you're still getting screwed. Anyway, um, BC was not shocked when I saw that report that a lot of talent just is looking at the whole draft as a complete failure because it just doesn't make sense. And these, these holes in this whole situation keep on forming to the point where it's, it's actually it's hindering the talent. It's not just hindering a storyline because there's really none of those outside the bloodline. Any real ones that you care about. So it's, it's hindering the talents. And it's all, it all stems from just not doing the draft or doing it correctly. There's an old saying, if you're, if you're going to do something, do it correctly or don't do it at all. So that's the situation on the draft, man. When the year is concluded and we all look back at the 2023 draft and we still got five more months of this year. We're all going to look back and go, wow, that did more bad than it did good. More negatives stemmed from it than positives. I talked about that NXT rating. I'll go over that real quick now, man. They saw a big increase with the influx of WWE's main roster talent this week headlined again by Judgment Day. In the past, we've seen the Ali's, the the Dana Brooks, the Baron Corbins, obviously, um, even before that, the Mahals, the Apollos, even Sethington Rollins recently having a match, popping a big rating, their highest uh, Q segmented rating in a very long time. Actually, Sethington did that. And recently, the Judgment Day. So when I say main roster talent is crossing back over to NXT, I mean a lot. You could make a roster of all the main roster talent that is going over to NXT. That alone could almost form a roster. Um, this week, 746,000 viewership for NXT. That is the second biggest viewership since June and the only reason June hit so high that was 793 or something wild like that it's again because that was the Sethington Rollins um main event match he came over he had a match in NXT and the the, the quarter hour man was like the highest it has gotten in years uh, probably would challenge its all time high if it wasn't for that show, they're consistently 550 to 650 ish. So that would easily be the highest rated this week. But again, last month, Sethington boomed them way past 750. This week, 746. That is still a substantial uptick from last week's uh, high 600 semod. Uh, they went up, I believe, just 101 in the. Demo a point zero one, so that would bring them to a point two one from the point two zero. Let's let's simplify it. <laughs> point two zero, I believe, last week. Point two one. Hey, upwards is upwards. Um, but the overall rating, man, that's seven forty six. It shows you that the the WWE main roster talent, it's working. This is exactly what Paul Levesque McMahon and Nicholas Khan. This is what they want. Get that to where the ratings are going to be substantial enough for Kennedy McMahon and Ari from Endeavor to go and get the highest value for their next TV rights deal. Everybody is playing a part here. Everybody is a pawn in the game. (laughs) Even Vincent Kennedy, guys, because now it's Endeavor that wants those deals or they're going to make their own streaming service and Y'all are going to be paying for your WWE. Because if they want to start their own, you ain't going to get it on the USA Network anymore. If you want to watch Raw, you're going to pay more money. You want to watch SmackDown, you may have to pay more money. That's Endeavor's whole mission right now. Make the most money. And Vince McMahon is even going to be a pawn in the game. And everybody has a role to play. And Nicholas Khan, Paul Levesque McMahon, they... By any means necessary, you know, and you say, well, this was Paul Levesque McMahon's little baby NXT. He must be crushed to do this. No, this is this is business guy. You got to remember Paul Levesque McMahon. He's he's a dude in his 50s or something. He's old man wears glasses. Uh, He's you know what I mean? He walks uh, several steps slower. 
He's, he's, it's business, guys. He's not crying every night because, you know, his father-in-law ruined NXT. Um, it's going to be all right. It's business. They're multi-millionaires, and they're going to cash in and make a hell of a lot more money. Nobody, uh, they're not crying themselves to sleep. But uh, the, you're going to, what this does for the future now, guys, is it's going to, it's set the model, right? The precedent has been set. This is business now. They see that people want to see the main roster talent over in NXT. This is the best way to pop up, the best rating possible. And you got the rights deals coming up soon. This is going to continue on. Obviously, Dirty Dom has the North American Championship. Baron Corbin and Ali look to permanently be placed back in NXT. Dana Brooke, maybe even, and many others are going to follow suit. I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of the people that got called up to the main roster are going to go back to NXT. But this looks to be like it's the new normal, especially with the TV rights deals coming up. And the ratings that they're pulling. If you put it into context, guys, WWE's NXT this week, they pulled about 100,000, maybe within 100,000 viewers of Dynamite from All Elite Wrestling, which is their flagship show. And that's something that their boss, Tony Khan, said, we are real competition with the WWE. We're in a war, supposedly, that WWE just doesn't know about. I really don't think they pay that much attention. Oh, <laughs> but um, you know, when you look at 100,000 viewership difference, NXT was being laughed at by a lot of the wrestling community. Dynamite's flagship is roughly 8 to 850 on a standard week. NXT just nearly pulled 750. So they're winning about 100,000 viewers away from Dynamite and AEW's flagship. It's crushing collision with the headliner, Phil CM Punk, CM Punk Brooks, guys. CM Punk. He was supposed to save AEW. He was the, he was the hottest free agent yet again after his injury, everybody said, and he can't even get out of the 500,000s on a Saturday night. NXT is pulling in another whole quarter of that, another third of what Collision is getting. Rampage, they're on their way to tripling Rampage. My point is, man, if, if they keep doing this, whether you like this or not, whether you think it's a dirty tactic or not, it was supposed to be developmental, if they keep going this route and AEW can't find its groove on Wednesday nights, could you imagine NXT surpassing the flagship of AEW on Wednesdays for their Tuesday night NXT show? It's something to think about, guys, because when you're looking at 750 and AEW's over there at 850, it's something to think about. Now, AEW might see a massive uptick this week. Uh, there was their Blood and Guts show, their B&G show. Um, the Golden Elite defeated the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, if you're wondering, if you're new to the channel, BC, why aren't you reviewing it? Same reason I'm not reviewing NXT, guys. JR9, my right-hand man on the channel, he'll cover NXT uh, fully in just a little bit. Uh, via the super thanks, is we're going to go over JR9's NXT report. But I, do not re I don't review a sh any show that doesn't pull at least a million in viewership. It's just a, that's kind of a goal that I set. Or should I say like a bar that has been set? As long as you can pull a million viewers and I know enough people care about the show, I'll absolutely review it. But if you can't pull a million viewers consistently, and, and that's the key, consistently. If you're not going to pull a million viewers consistently, then, uh, then not many people are going to care about a podcast like talking about it. So that's why I don't do that. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays, those are just a couple of the nights during the week where I am just super busy and a lot of times just out and about. In fact, all I saw from Blood and Guts last night was <laughs> the, the conclusion. Mox is like handcuffed to the rope, bleeding again like he always is. Um, I think Wheeler Utah was rolling around in tax maybe and the Golden Elite had their arms raised. And I was like, all right, <laughs> that's a mess. But... Uh, hopefully it was good. You know what I mean? 
you get matchups probably like Claudio and Omega. If they if they en- ended up interacting last night, that's a cool portion of that type of match. Uh, you know, it was probably good. I heard that um, Jungle Boy Jack Perry defeated uh, Hook for that FTW championship. No matter if you look at that as a prestigious title or not. Uh, surprised that they're booking Hook like that. Hook at one point you thought was going to be like this next big thing. Uh, he's beyond average now, but I don't know. On paper, or when I heard about it, I said that might that might have been okay. But again, you really have to watch the show to see how it was done. Um, I believe MJF and Adam Cole won the blind eliminator tournament, whatever that is, that whole thing. We saw that coming, though. I, it's it's good for their trajectory. It pretty much it dimmed out everybody else that had a chance of winning that. I don't think that was the original plan. People just really started to like MJF and Adam Cole together. Anyway, that that's just some of the things that I I believe anyway I saw. I came across that they uh, they produced last night on Dynamite. So the the fact that it was an hour long blood and guts match on television. Um, they most likely popped the rating at least to 950. I don't know if it's enough to do a million. They have all in coming out, then all out. So you, you got um, damn near close to all. These are go-home shows, really. Because there's so much going up. I mean, <laughs> the next two weeks are going to be go-home shows. Because you also got to remember all out as well. Um, so yeah, they're probably going to get a big rating there, but usually they're about 8 to 850 lately. So NXT is coming up on that ass is what I'm saying, man. NXT and they're doing it in a way where they said, "All right, forget the formula that we've been claiming, forget the developmental, forget the we're the college to the NFL." No. We're bringing the main roster, we're calling in the troops and we're going to start whooping that ass. And we're going to show Comcast, NBC Universal, USA Network, we're going to show that we're even better than what's supposed to be the competition to our A shows and our B shows. We're better than them. That's what they're going for. I bet you that Paul Levesque wants to go for that AEW rating of 850. I bet you Paul Levesque did not forget that he got his ass whooped by Tony Khan and kicked off, booted off Wednesday nights. Uh, Paul Levesque McMahon is very petty. He's not going to forget that. Anyway, no matter how they got there, man, nearly 750,000 viewers, man. So we can criticize it all we want. It's a show on Tuesday nights, and it's pulling in some of its best numbers um, that is done in a very long time. Uh, Next, uh, this is a good one, man. This is fun. We might be seeing a return to WWE, and this individual could help revitalize a veteran's career. Now, I gave you a teaser in that cold open. (laughs) I told you they just left AEW. Now, nothing is set in stone here, man. This is just what we are hearing as of the recording of this podcast. This person has left AEW. The contract has expired is what we are hearing. Now, that does not mean Tony Khan doesn't sit down, have a conversation, present a new contract, and this person accepts. No question. Uh, but maybe this person just wanted to leave the company after the contract had expired, see what's out there. Doesn't mean this person won't come back to the company. But as of the recording of this podcast, contract expired, and this is truly being discussed in the wrestling world. Something that could happen, man. One of the biggest free agents right now in pro wrestling. You ready? Excuse me! That came out more like Chris Jericho, man. <laughs> Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero. She has left AEW. Contract expired, truth be told. And um, she is now a free agent. Now, immediately, and this is from reputable people, they are talking about WWE bringing in Vicky Guerrero and putting her alongside, and we just mentioned this dude earlier and how it's sad they never have anything for him, putting her alongside the Dolph Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. 
which would obviously revitalize this dude's career. I mean, one of his greatest stints was actually with Vicky Guerrero. Guys, I believe, and when I say I believe, I'm 99.99% sure, sure, like a Clorox wipe, that he won the title with Vicky Guerrero, the world title. I know he cashed in and he was with Big E and AJ Lee. But I'm sure that he was... I think he won the world title with Vicky Guerrero. The point is, he was with Vicky Guerrero um, in a very memorable stint in that company. And it was... Man, that was a connection you didn't think would work, but it more than worked. They played their roles beautifully. Vicky would end up getting some power in WWE storyline wise. I think she was like the general manager or something like that consultant for Monday Night Raw and the decisions that she was making was pissing off Dolph. It was actually starting to hurt Dolph and that's how they ended up splitting. Could you believe if they could you believe it if they just revitalized that man? If you're going to bring in Vicky, man, make it have have some fun with it. She's a really good manager, even great at times. And some of the best wrestlers in the world had a really loud, great manager with them. Shawn Michaels and the macho man, Randy Savage. They both had the same manager. Sensational Sherry was her name. Sherry Martell. And she was loud. And she was just, a lot of people felt she was annoying. And you have like, you know, macho man doesn't need a manager. He's the macho man. But with Sensational Sherry, it just worked. Shawn Michaels, when he was that cocky Shawn HBK character as the heel, um, this was way back. You know, he's taking on people like Rick Martel, Tatanka, and he had Sensational Sherry, and it just worked. And Dolph and Vicky Guerrero worked. She's a free agent. We are hearing rumblings from reputable people that WWE has interest and these people are talking about Dolph. Now, I don't know if they're hearing something more, <laughs> but listen, that would revitalize the dude. And we were just talking about it's a shame that he's jobber status, and that's only when they do use him. And it's no wonder that even J.D. McDonut attacking him for two weeks, it's no wonder that that wasn't going to work. Um, yeah, that's an interesting piece there. If you guys didn't know, as of right now, contract expired, WWE showing interest. How would you bring her back? I wouldn't, BC. Keep her off. No, I feel I felt there was always a, a place for Vicky. She was actually really good at what she did, man. Uh, Vicky Guerrero was more of a character than a lot of the wrestlers you see today. That's kind of sad, but true. I mean, she had a kiss. She was not afraid to just make herself the bun of the joke. She was not afraid to do anything the company asked. And a lot of times the company took advantage of that, by the way, as they often do. They, they can't help themselves. They get a laugh backstage in Gorilla and, they'll, and they'll, the, the next week it'll be amped. All right, I had to do a little cut there. I don't usually like to edit these, but I had to get another coffee, full transparency. So if it seems like I'm more amplified toward the end of this podcast, you know why. I got a fresh coffee. Speaking of, we're about to go over the super thanks as you guys do a bunch of coffees over to BC. Never needed. Always appreciated. I make sure you guys get a proper shout out. So I'm about to do that. Uh, we're going to go over some really good responses to my question I asked in yesterday's podcast. Who should be taking the title off of Roman Reigns? Um, I don't know if it's any more of a clear picture to BC who should be taking it off Reigns. I don't know if it's any more clearer going, coming out of those responses as going into asking the questions, <laughs> but you guys had good responses, man. It's just, there's so many different answers, you know, and there's just no right. I mean, what happened at WrestleMania, man, that botched decision not to put it on Cody. It has just opened the floodgates to just a bunch of names now, and I, none of them are going to capture lightning in a bottle like what we had april 2nd on night two of wrestlemania but we're gonna go over those responses for sure i got one more story i'll go over this real quick that i want to uh throw over to you guys and it has to be the last story before we get into the super thanks and the responses otherwise we'll be here for another three hours 
And by the way, that is why I do love this podcast format. You know, when we first started the channel, we were just putting up you know stupid videos, five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, but these podcasts, it allows BC to actually discuss and dissect these topics, actually have a discussion, depict what is good from bad, right from wrong, um, and just have these real talks, man. And uh, BC's got the gift to gab anyway. You throw him a cup of coffees. And we rock out. So that's why I always say, put in the earbuds. You know, even if you got to go out, go out in the world, leave the earbuds in. It's a straight podcast. Or if you got to treat it like you're reading a book in chapters. Remember where you left off? Come on back. Pick up the podcast where you left off. But uh, I like these long formatted uh, uploads, man. Um, it really allows BC to really talk about the subjects that I want to discuss and I think are very important in the wrestling world. So I thank you guys, man, for everybody that listens to second one all the way to the last second on these podcasts, even when it is audio format only, because that allows BC to do these podcasts anywhere out there in the world. So moving on with this last story, Liv Morgan was seen in a sling no joke, man. I, I mean, we were joking for a while. Like, what is worse, wrestling Ridge Holland or being tagged up with Raquel Rodriguez? Smiling Santana. L like, what's worse? Because you're probably coming out without a limb or some shit. I mean, you know what I mean? We joke around, but if you look at Raquel Rodriguez, they, they threw Aaliyah with her and Aaliyah gets injured. Then they threw Shotzi. Shotzi got injured. Then they threw Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan got injured. They put Shotzi back with her. Shotzi got another minor injury. Now Liv is walking around in a sling. We hope it's just minor. But damn, of course it's just coincidence. Nobody's blaming Raquel. It's not like she's wrestling them. It's not a Nia Jax situation, right? She injures most girls. Nia Jax has a laundry list of people she has injured <laughs> while wrestling them. Some of them like Karisane. Multiple times. But I mean, man, when you when you hear about what WWE has planned for you and you hear you're wrestling Ridge Holland or you're being tagged up with Raquel Ra uh, Rodriguez, I can fucking speak. Let me roll my fucking R's. You can't do a Ra Raquel Rodriguez. No, no, no. Raquel Rodriguez. Come on. Roll that shit, BC. Um, y y What are you going <laughs> to... I don't even know, man. I don't know which one's worse at this point. But uh, if Liv Morgan is seriously injured, all jokes aside, we hope her a speedy recovery. That would be, man, that would be shitty coming off of Bailey's recent injury as well. I don't know. These ladies are, you know, they're going all out. It's just, man, if the booking doesn't meet them halfway, what is it really for? It's almost a, a it, yeah, man. Sucks. You want to you wanna go all out. You want to put on the best performance. You want to put your all into it. But then you think, is it even worth it? Sometimes with the booking that they're given, you know, oh, we're just going to lose the championships to fucking Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. I'm sorry, what? We just got them. <laughs> yeah, well, we need Raquel to, uh, we, we got to hot shot her over to SummerSlam in two weeks so she can take on Rhea. So it doesn't make sense with the titles. We're just going to take them off you. So not only does Liv Morgan lose the title, she gets injured in the process. Again, a sling was seen on her by fans when she was leaving the arena or something like that. Maybe it's just a minor thing. Maybe she's just uh, one of those better to be safe than sorry type situations. We hope and wish the best for Liv Morgan. All right, let's do this, man. Some super thankses. Um, and also including in these super thankses is going to be JR9's NXT review. Um, which I always look forward to as well. And then we'll get over the responses of who should take that championship off of Roman Reigns. Clutch City fan, five spot coffee. I appreciate you, bro. Not just the coffee, but you always up in these chats. I know I don't get to see it too often these days up in here, but Clutch City fan showing that ultimate respect. Also, when I say ultimate respect, a gold member, channel member, Clutch City fan. And then just throws a bonus coffee over to BC just to show that love and support. I appreciate you, bro. It still has to be Cody to win that title and finish his story, BC. By the way, I know it's off topic, but I don't know if I am the only person that feels it's a travesty that AEW gets the rights to the Owen Hart name. I understand that situation. 
I understand that situation. Um, I think he means with the turmoil with Martha, the wife of Owen and WWE. So Clutch City Fan says, I understand the situation, but I don't believe AEW is doing a great job with this stupid tournament using his name. I wish Martha would come to her senses and work a deal with WWE where she gets them to donate to the Hart Foundation and finally put him in the Hall of Fame. Let's have a strong day unit. Clutch City. Absolutely, man. Let's have an amplified day for sure. I appreciate the coffee and I appreciate the comment, man. Um, I do agree or I feel the same way. I, I wish that Martha could come to some type or, or I wish there could be a relationship. Let's put it that way because it's such a t- touchy subject. Um, you know, on one hand, you can't blame her for not wanting to work with the company. Uh, not so, oh man, it's not just even the accident, the tragic accident itself. It's it's the big story afterwards. A lot of people conflicted. The show should have ended. Why did the show go on? Then there's people that say, well, the show had to go on. Uh, there was a, matches left. People were there in attendance. Owen would want it to go. You, you know, there's all these people that say certain things. I think that's another thing that weighs on Martha as well. It's one of those things, unless you're in Martha's position, nobody can really say. Everybody's different. Yes, I absolutely. Uh, it, I would love to see WWE and Martha come to a, a big relationship where so much could be derived from it. The heart found it looked like their foundation, like you said. I mean, WWE, man, they could do so much for that foundation. Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame and that name being able to be used on WWE television could do so much for today's fan who didn't know a lot about Owen Hart. That would open uh, that would open Pandora's box to an amazing career. Cut way too short, yes, but amazing nonetheless. WWE is the vehicle that could absolutely propel Owen Hart's name. AEW, you got to give him credit for trying, but the Owen Hart tournament, no, it obviously doesn't feel prestigious. And yeah, a lot more could be being done, but at least they're doing something. At least they did reach out. Some people do feel it's a name grab, right? Kind of like what Chavo Guerrero says about Ray, always name grabbing Eddie Guerrero. It's a name grab to use Owen Hart. But you have to remember a lot of those wrestlers love Owen Hart. They respect Bret Hart and Owen Hart and those wrestlers so much. So Tony Khan is doing them an honor. It's an honor for him and it's an honor bestowed on all of them to have Owen Hart to even have that tournament. I don't want to talk in circles. It's such a touchy subject. There's so many ways you can look at this, man. There is no right and wrong. Or some people are so passionate about this. There is a right and wrong. The show should have stopped. She should never talk to WWE. Congrats to Tony Khan and thank you for doing something with the name and creating the tournament. Cut and dry, that simple. And and that's fine. I, I, I There's nothing you can say against that. But Clutch City fan, you you wish that there was a relationship with WWE and that he could go into the Hall of Fame and that WWE could send any proceeds from anything in the future to the foundation. I get it, man. I'm with you. I wish there could be. Um, but that was a night that Martha Hart, and, and she doesn't like what happened afterwards either in the way WWE handled things. So I don't know. I don't know. I think there's still a lot. There's so much we still don't even know about that Clutch City fan. But I appreciate it, brother. And I can't say you're wrong, man. For sure. Uh, Sato Fortune with a two-spot coffee. Uh, Sato Fortune. I appreciate it. Of course, it will be Cody taking the title off Roman. They want to create a, quote, chase, and he's the only main eventer guy being pushed. Same thing with how Roman was supposed to dethrone Brock at Mania 31 and Mania 34 for the title. It lost both of those... Lost both of those matches, but he eventually beat him to unify the belts. Cody is the only bigger name as of now. Stay amplified, BC. Well, that's the only way BC can be is amplified. So you guys as well, man. You too. Asato Fortune. I appreciate you, brother. Stay amplified yourself. And 
It looks to be Cody Rhodes, one of the main names. It's just L.A. Knight and people like that. They can catch lightning in a bottle. And before you know it, who knows where L.A. Knight is going to be by the end of the year. You know, plans might have to change. Daniel Bryan was not supposed to win WrestleMania 30. The Yes movement became so big that even Vincent Kennedy, Paul Levesque McMahon, had to go, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. We got to put this title on him, don't we? Damn it! They were not happy about that. You know, Hunter Hearst Helmsley was not happy about having to put um, Daniel Bryan over. I think that was before the main event. I think he had to beat Triple H first at the beginning of the night. And then he got into the match with uh, Batista and whoever else. Or maybe Randy or I, I forget. Um, I don't know. That was a whole... But but they had this whole thing that they had to rearrange. You know, that was supposed to be Batista. He won the he won the Royal Rumble. That was his championship. And he was going to have one last big run. And that guy got screwed. And it's nobody's fault. The Yes Movement exploded. What we're seeing right now is LA Knight is just taking over the, the WWE. Now, Cody Rhodes... Uh, Asado Fortune and Cody Rhodes still gets massive pops we always knew he was going to I think a lot of fans just got scared oh if he wins the title fans will get fickle and boo him well he's been booed in AEW fastly so it doesn't matter what fan it is they booed Cody no matter what you can't be worried about the fans you are going to dictate that if you are as good as we put you up on that pedestal to be, and that's what we did with Cody, and the booking is at least meeting everybody halfway, then nobody will boo you. You'll be fine. But you can't be scared to put it on, on Cody because he didn't struggle enough and fans might boo him. No, you can't do that. So, you know, you're, you're going to, what? what's going to happen at WrestleMania 40? In Philadelphia, are we going to try to recreate lightning in a bottle like we had in, on April 2nd this year? Are we going to try to create that magic moment? Of course, people will be pumped up and it'll be a happy moment. Pyro will go off and Cody finally gets his title. Okay, the moment will never be recreated. It'll never be as magical. If Roman is still champion by WrestleMania 40 and he loses it to the same guy he faced at 39... It will nowhere near be as memorable. At that point, we're celebrating more just taking it off Roman than we are getting it onto Cody. Because think about it. Think about it. At 39, most of us were okay with Roman's title reign. I know there was a lot of people that felt, no, he's just... Every time he beats somebody, they have nothing for them afterwards. It's just helping Roman. I get the negative side of it. But still, to have a lengthy title reign... In a world of pro wrestling these days where titles are just like, it's, it's a merry-go-round of hot potato. It's a fucking carousel, and every time that thing makes a round, you get the championship back. Um, You know, it was, it's nice to see a long title reign. In, in good matches, for the most part, that Roman was involved in. Some good storylines, some good storytelling. But most of us felt that at Mania, it was the perfect time to take it off of him. And Cody was the right guy. It was magical. We weren't celebrating Roman losing the title. We were celebrating Cody getting it. The problem that that's going to arise, trust me, you don't have to believe this now, but wait another, what is it, six, seven months? How far is, uh, is April? What, what is it now? So we're at July, rest of July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Oh my goodness. Ten, nine or ten months. <laughs> <laughs> nine months at least to the next WrestleMania. Now watch what happens, man. Watch what happens. There's going to be much more of a celebration and irritation that Roman even has the title. It's going to be a celebration of him just losing it more than it is Cody winning it. And I hope that's not the case, but watch. Watch. That's the trajectory if you're going to stick with Cody. And and, and I agree. I don't see anybody other than Cody. L.A. Knight. I just don't know how big he's going to get. You know, we didn't know how big Stone Cold was. I'm not going to... I'm not... By the way... (laughs) I'm not putting him there with Stone Cold. I'm just using that as an example. Nobody knew how big Stone Cold was going to get. He became just, uh, I mean, people were talking about him in line with Hulk Hogan. And we remember how big Hulk Hogan was. So I'm not saying LA Knight will reach that, but you don't know, man. And Cody could absolutely be derailed. You got people thinking it should be Jason Uso or even Solo Sokoa. There's people saying Drew McIntyre. This guy came back clowning around with Scooter McStevenson, Matthew P.H. Riddle, and going for a mid-card title again, Gunther. 
Same feud he was in before he left. So, interesting conversation. I appreciate the response, especially in the form of the super thanks throwing BC a coffee. Um, but but it's a, it's a good response. A lot of people believe Cody. It's just the problem now is then why wasn't this done at 39? He didn't need struggle and adversity any more than ripping his peck off of his fucking... Uh, off the bone and then wrestling inside of hell in a cell and then he's got to sit on the sidelines and then he wins the rumble and then he gets fucking all of the he's he's facing the whole bloodline i mean that's enough take the title off of roman there you got to read the room roman then went on vacation for two straight months came back had nothing but tag team matches and has not defended that title since and now Jay Uso is he's finally going to defend the title after what will be four months ish. That's the it, you know, Jason Uso, and, and the bigger story here is that Red Tribal Lay. That's what they're really fighting over. Who should be the tribal chief of the family? Who is best to lead the family? That's all it should have been. This whole implosion of the bloodline does not need the championship. Cody and Brock's feud needed the championship. That's the whole reason Brock would attack Cody because Brock had a stipulation in his last match with Roman. If I lose, I can't challenge you ever again for the title. He lost and then he waited and Cody got it and boom, that would set up the whole summer, right? You guys know it's true, man. The title belonged on Cody just for storyline purposes. And for Roman's storyline, which was non-existent, you're going home for two months. You don't bring a title with you, and then they had to recreate a whole nother title. What are we doing? That's all I'm asking. What are we doing here? Asado Fortune. Really good response, though, man. We'll see. What they have... What they uh, actually, I should say, what they actually go with. But there, there's many months. I don't think this dude's dropping it till WrestleMania, clearly. And that's bare minimum. I heard... From very reputable people, they're going for Hulk Hogan's reign of 1474 days, which means he would keep it past WrestleMania. Could you imagine if they do Cody Rose dirty yet again? The ultimate FU just to a, just to reach, defeat, conquer, and surpass Hulk Hogan's 1474. Man, I don't even want to think about that right now. Craig Patton, 10 spot. Says, thanks, BC. Craig Patton with that super thanks. Couple of cool fees. Craig Patton, I appreciate you, brother. I don't know if it was on this podcast or the other one, too. I did come across Craig Patton's comment or two where you said, uh, uh, I have some coffees, BC, right? Was that in a replay? Oh, it was the same one. Yes, Craig Patton, I got it here. Have have a few coffees on me, my man. Rock status. Uh, Craig Patton, I appreciate you, bro. I absolutely will, man. Thank you for the support, bro. Big Nang with a two spot. Thanks, ABC. Whatever happened to the Amplified Member of the Week? Big Nang, the title is vacant right now. Who was the last one? I think it was a WWE, AEW, Marvel fan. Uh, Well, either way, it is vacant until we get an actual Amplified Channel Member of the Week championship. We're going to name it something fancy. It'll look fancy. And that'll be when the title returns. But that is why there has not been a member of the week. I talked about, uh, it was like a week or two ago, about having a championship. Well, we're going to do that. So as of right now, it is vacant. Let the history books show, Big Dang. It is indeed vacant. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Um, And... Before I go over to JR9 Gamings and that super thanks, it's going to be the NXT, the seventh edition of JR9's Amplified NXT Roundup, as he calls it, a review, JR9's review of NXT. Uh, Before I get over to that, I just want to read a few more of your guys' responses to the question I posed in yesterday's podcast and see what you guys said about it. Um, Aaron, Aaron Brickford says it still should be Cody Rhodes. Pile driver, pile driver finisher says Baron Corbin. Now that's got to be an LOL type answer. Please tell me that pile driver finisher. <laughs> um, what do we got here? Um, Eric Leno says the rock. Now there was a few people that did say the rock. Um, 
it's an interesting concept, you know, him coming at WrestleMania 40 to WWE and taking on his cousin to see who the real tribal chief of that family is. It just makes sense. Another reason Cody should have had the title. Everything Roman has done since doesn't need the title. And you could keep on doing shit like that to Mania 40 where Roman and his cousin could have a battle and you don't even got to worry about a title. But now if it is The Rock and Roman has the title, the community will be split. Yeah, we want to see the match. But no, The Rock should not be winning the title. He's, a, he's not even part-time. All of this was just to give it to The Rock. It didn't make anybody. It's not for anybody that's going to stick around. Four years at that point of Roman being champion for The Rock. Trust me, if it was this year, I was saying I would have no problem with The Rock getting it. If they weren't going Cody, by the way. But they didn't. And now I don't know about 40, Eric Leno. I mean, would you take it's a big match. It's a match that has to happen. WrestleMania is the place. Philadelphia is the place. The Rock has real, real reasoning, right? Remember, The Rock came back a few years ago at Royal Rumble. Uh, Vince McMahon wanted him to give Roman the rub. Roman wins the Royal Rumble. And after Roman r- wins the Rumble, Uh, Philadelphia boos the shit out of him. The Rock comes out, holds up his hand, and they continued to boo even louder. They were not happy with Vince making Rock give Roman the rub, and they were not buying it. And The Rock was booed in Philadelphia because of Roman. I always remember the look that The Rock gave the crowd, like that 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 elbow, that elbow, the, uh, the eyebrow, man. And he's looking at the crowd like, are you booing this loudly? Yes, that's how much people did not want Roman Reigns winning that Rumble. And now here you are at WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. Man. But The Rock, at least Eric Leno, makes an interesting conversation. Um, Ryan. Ryan says, I feel like Finn Balor should get, uh, should get it since he was stripped of the Universal title due to his shoulder then was on the back burner for years, not using him properly with his talent. Yeah, I mean, if they booked him more properly, uh, more properly, I could be on board with such. They haven't, though. I, I barely want to see Balor right now in this, in this participation trophy championship match with Sethington for the second straight pay-per-view. The, the booking has been off. Now, this past week was a really good face-to-face with Sethington. Other than that, he's a, he just feels like another spoke on the wheel. And that's what I was getting at with Cody earlier. I forgot to even finish that point. You know, even though we're going to still applaud him at WrestleMania 40 if he does conquer Roman, and we're still going to love the title, you know, getting off of Roman and onto Cody, it's as of right now, he just feels like another spoke on the wheel ever since WrestleMania. Yeah, he gets a good pop. He's one of the only over guys in the company. We get it, but he just feels average. I mean, if, you, if Cody Rhodes is not on Monday Night Raw, you kind of forget about it, right? Ten minutes after the show, then you're, oh yeah, Cody wasn't on the show. It's happened before. Where they put him out in the third hour and I forgot all about him in the first two hours. So Balor's kind of like that too. If you don't book them properly, I don't know if anybody's going to really want to see Balor be the, one, be the one to defeat Roman Reigns. Um, Brian, Brian Wong says, I'd like to see L.A. Knight win it. Well, man, if he still continues to catch this white, white, hot momentum, it could be L.A. Knight. Uh, I'll tell you that. A lot of people said L.A. Knight, actually, man, as I'm going through this, man. So... Daniel and a few others said Bray Wyatt. That would be interesting. You got to remember, Roman took it off of Bray originally, man. Exactly. Daniel said, I'd love to see Bray be the one to beat Roman. A lot of you guys are saying it was Roman. Did Bray dirty. Some of you guys are saying it's Jey Uso. I I know how you feel about it, BC, but it's got to be Jey Uso because of X, Y, and Z. I just feel there's no need for it. They're fighting over the red tribal lay. Who's who should be the tribal chief? The, the title is secondary. So why would you have three years of Roman as champion just to drop it to a tag team guy? And the Usos are my favorite tag team, but he's a tag team guy. Where the title in a situation where the title is secondary, I just don't understand that. Same thing with Solo Sokoa, and he's not even ready. He can put on some good matches, okay, but 
Solo Sokoa should I, I don't see how he's taking the title from him. Some people said Sethington Rollins. Man, if you passed up Sami Zayn in Montreal, Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania for Sethington Rollins, man, BC would not be on board with that, guys. So anyway, I mean, we could be here another hour, man. Really good responses. Um, but I do want to tie this up now with a, with, with, a, with a nice bow at the very end with JR9 Gaming's 7th edition of the Amplified NXT Roundup. Make sure I smash an up on that too, JR9. So, JR9 says, I'm really annoyed with some of the decisions made last night. Now, he's talking Tuesday night NXT. Uh, and I have a ton to get off my chest, so this is going to be slightly longer than usual. Speak your truth, JR9. Positives. Dragonov and Mello had a very good back and forth promo. Hyped their matchup well. Dragonov was very intense with his delivery, like as always, which really made everything he said believable. And Mello was so strong on the mic, too. That's good to see. Because that's one of the areas I'm still kind of like, mm, I'm not buying into Mello on the mic. And then you got cheerleader trick behind him. <laughs> it's a bit much or a bit little. So that's good to hear, JR9. And Dragonoff, I've been down with that since uh, that dude since theft. Amazing last man standing with Dijak. I, I mean, still match of the year candidate to BC. I'm glad I caught that event. So that goes into the positives. Roxy and Blair had a good sit-down interview. That's right. They're setting that up for the bash, right, JR9? Let me keep reading and I'll find out. <laughs> uh, setting Literally was the next words. Setting up their Great American Bash match in Roxy's home state. Yes, which is significantly better than the Ladies World title match. Roxy was more fired up than ever, saying that she will show a side of her we have never seen. Loving this new attitude of her already. Their match should be good. Might have to catch that promo, man. Roxy's my gal. If you're saying that's the most amped up she's been, that's got to be something special. Tony D's homecoming. I saw a clip of that, man. It was really funny. He was, gonna, he was just leaving prison, being picked up. <laughs> I saw that, man. Like, real quickly. The hotel that I was at, man, I literally I had to do a quick, uh, a quick little wardrobe change because we were going out for dinner that night, and uh, I, I turned it on real quick to see what was on, and it was Tony, uh, Tony D's getting out of prison. I was like, come on, man, I wish I caught more of this story. Tony D's home homecoming uh, was best part of the show. They had a short vignette of him leaving prison. That's exactly what I must have caught then. Uh, then had family members in the ring to celebrate his freedom. Damn it. That would have been so cool to catch video package explaining how Stax and Tony's master plan came together to free him while fooling Gallus. Now Gallus did interrupt making the tag title match official for great American bash. They tried to attack Tony and Stax, but the family members all simultaneously brought out crowbars. Great which I thought was a great detail slash visual allowing Tony and Stax to stand tall. Later on, Tony met Dom backstage and both spoke about knowing the someone from prison with Tony saying, Benny from the yard said hello. <laughs> I love it, JR9. That's awesome, man. I wish I caught this. Which was the only positive from Dom's NXT appearance. Tony D is just phenomenal. I do agree. Now the negatives. Dom winning the title was just pathetic and has embarrassed the entire NXT brand. Wes deserved better than losing the title to a main roster talent on a random Tuesday just because WWE had this weird Judgment Day agenda. An NXT talent should have gotten the rub from ending the reign as they could have been propelled from it. Sounds, uh, Jaron, before I keep reading in, into the negatives, it sounds like a lot of the community does agree with that. Dom with a title, nobody really has a problem with that. Dom with the briefcase, money in the bank. If they went that way, nobody would have a problem with that. Dom taking on Cody Rhodes, people are cool with that. Um, but going to NXT and taking the title off of somebody that was truly being developed in what was supposed to be developmental, a lot of people are not actually happy about that. But WWE knows that's where the ratings are. And they went and they got them, even if it's a cheap way. But Jar9, you are, it looks like in the majority there, bro. And BC kind of has to agree with that. 
where did I leave off? Because that's a big, yeah, that's a that's a massive negative. Plus, more concerning, Dom couldn't hang with Wes in the ring. One of his weakest performances I've seen in a long time, ending the longest North American title reign of 269 days, which also had the most title defenses. Like that is the worst. NXT booking botch of the year. Strong statement by Jer9 Gaming. Huh. I heard a lot about that too, man. I heard that he had a sloppy performance and almost injured Wesley. So I didn't go back and watch the... Uh, I didn't see the match. I didn't go back and try to catch a clip or anything like that. I just haven't had the time. Obviously, audio format only means BC is very busy, uh, very busy out in the world. But, man, I'm hearing a lot of negative... Uh, reviews from Dominic's performance. Interesting. Moving on uh, in the negatives, Tiffany is looking weak in every segment. It seems last night was no different as after it was set up that she'll face Thea at great American bash for the title in a submission match, which is not pay-per-view quality. She then tapped out to Thea again via Kimura. Tiffany's booking has fallen off a cliff since Battleground. Damn, that is shady booking, man. That's not good because Tiffany was one of the bright spots, BC told all you guys. They got her losing, tapping out. Rematches. Gigi versus Kiana wasn't good. Gigi has to improve her ring work. She seems to wrestle in slow motion, which makes her offense not believable at all. I really hope Gigi does improve soon as there's so much potential in her. It doesn't help matters that she was made to look like a clown last night, having a tug of war with the ref over Kiana, Kiana Bags, which set her up to lose to Kiana's finish simplistically. So Kiana's bag, they were having a tug. Oh, man, that's some uh, WWE kind of horse shit. Dijak's story after Battleground is Eddie Thorpe. Now, no shade to Eddie, but Dijak should be in a more significant spot to capitalize on the brutal match with... Uh, uh, Dragon off. Him beating Wes could have worked. JC was once again not on TV. Only mention was when heel Rio was motivating babyface Lear on beating JC whenever they'll face off. Oh, that's gotta suck, man. That's your that's your girl, and they just won't even use her. Damn, bro. Rhea made JC sound significantly inferior to Valkyria, which is terrible, terrible writing as it just hurts JC's appeal to fans that may know nothing about her. Plus, it's not even true, as although I'm a big fan of Val from her NXT UK days, JC is the better talent overall when you include promos, charisma, and presence into things. It does seem like JC will be losing again to Lyra based off, her, off of this segment, and I'm getting really fed up of this disrespectful booking from HBK. JC deserves better. Overall, the show sucked. <laughs> oh, damn, Jaronine. Tell them how you feel, bro. Overall, the show sucked. There were some positives, but they were all overshadowed by the horrendous negatives like Dom winning an NXT title. HBK is still better than 3H's, but he is showing some major flaws in his booking as of late. You never know, Jaronine. HHH could have great presence these days over that show because that's what it looks like. Him and Nick Khan had been sent to do a lot of damage to the NXT that you guys love. Truthfully, that's that's the truth. Endeavor is putting the pressure on McMahon. McMahon's got the pressure down on everybody underneath him. And, and everybody is doing business so they can get the most amount of money. The biggest deals for WWE means the most amount of money for them. That's all that matters to these suits and ties. It doesn't matter if it's a Nicholas Khan. It doesn't matter if it's a Paul Levesque McMahon. It doesn't matter if it's a Vince McMahon. They're all going to be working to make Endeavor now the most money. Jaron Nine loved the seventh edition of the Amplified NXT Roundup, man. Appreciate you so much, dude. That's the only way that we should be ending this podcast. Until next time, and there will be a next time. Top guy, I am out. Salute to every single one of my Amplified Unit members. Every single one of my subscribers. Oh, hold on. There was one. Uh, hold on. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. There was one other super chat too, man. Or super thanks super chat. Let me get to that real quick. Hold on. Steven Tate, gold status, man. That came in a little late on my page. Steven Tate with a five spot coffee. I appreciate that, dude. Have a copy. Uh, a, a, a copy? Have a copy. It's it's been a long podcast. I need another copy. <laughs> Have a cup of coffee. There you go, BC. 
Stephen Tate says, thanks. Have a cup of coffee on me, brother. Five spot. I appreciate that, dude. We'll go to 30,000 and beyond. You can believe that. Stephen Tate. All right, guys. To every single one of you guys, much love and respect. Till next time, and there will be a next time. BC, saying check you.